Electrical motor commutators as bullets? Will they fly straight? Will they be stable? Will they possibly be as accurate and effective as factory ammo? Let's find out. What do you have there? Well, these were sent to us from a fellow out in Texas. I think his name was Evan, I believe. These are, they call them the commutators out of a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> They're kind of uh, cool looking. Kind of interesting. It looks like a specially built round, but we're going to recycle them and see what they're good for. Yeah. He had a really good name for them. I'll, I'll add it to the, it was like the Hoover Movers Hoover, or the Hoover Mover or something. Or something huh? like that. He had a good name. I'll, I'll add that. To you. Well, <laughs> it was like clever as heck. It's a vacuum. Right? Let's see if these suck or not. Yeah. Vacuum cleaner commutators. Part of the motor. If you don't know what a commutator is, where the brushes ride. More than 10. Okay, well, I think it's closer to 12 yards. It just gives you an idea. It's hard to tell, you know. Like I, like we said before, people think that the the vehicles you can see back there that are really close. They either don't understand that cameras have zoom lenses, or they think that shotguns can shoot three and a half miles. So, <laughs> very interesting com comments. All right. So we're gonna. He's gonna shoot the first one at the AR 500 plate. 13, 1385. 1385 on the Patreon chronograph. As you know, hitting the target is half the battle. How did it get there? Very well. With the angular momentum provided by the rifling of that rifled barrel, the slug was very stable in flight. And we're not sponsored by Ch Chiobi or whatever, Chiambi, Chobani. I don't even know what Greek yogurt is, but it's evil, I think. It just helps us focus the camera, and I'm too lazy to take it back down, so. Jeez. 1440 on the Patreon chronograph. Shot number one was no fluke. Shot number two was just as stable and very accurate. He hit the cylinder dead center right on the welded seam. Very impressive. That wasn't bad at all, surprisingly accurate. Yeah. I was aiming for center mass, we hit the seam. Right on the weld right there. Right wide open. Look at the backside. Whoa, Straight yeah. Straight through. Yeah. A little steel core in that thing was nasty. Yeah, okay, let's shoot, uh, let's set the dug at about, oh, 35 yards or something, see if we can hit a dug with it. Okay, we're now about Oh, 20 yards away or so? Yeah, right at it. We're going to try for the cowboy's hat again. Okay. Called the cowboy's hat. The C Chevron Gas and Goody uh, Cowboy there. Okay, I'm ready. Dang it. After seeing this shot, I'm fairly confident we could have reached even further, maybe up to 50 yards with these with, with relatively decent accuracy. Hey, how'd you do? Yeah. You said technically we hit the hat. I was aiming for here, a little bit to the right. Nice clean hole. Let's see. Well, we got something in there. Okay, we'll pull it out and see if we recovered anything. Here it is right here. Oh, you... Yeah, I got a hold of it. <laughs> Looked like something hit the dirt like it went on through. Yeah, maybe the steel core did. There's a lot of steel there. No, we got a core too. Oh, okay. Maybe we saw yeah. the wadding or something. Must have been the wadding. Alright, let me get in here so I can push it up. It's there, pulled out of there. It's right there. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Well, wow. now you can see what the commutator looks like. The core, the core came out. Look at that. I can't believe that plastic really survived. It's, it's really distorted. That's a clean hole, though. It hit nice. Yeah, it must have hit nose first. And you can see my marking on there, which hopefully we'll see on the camera. If it's rotating and flying, not tumbling. Not bad, Evan. 
No, nah, look at that hole, man. It mm -hmm. Look like a hole punch. <laughs> Very impressive. Not bad. Clip the cowboy's hat. It's one thing to obtain stability using spin stabilization. That's pretty easy. How will it perform with no rifling at all and through a full choke? A normal bullet fired from a gun without any spin will just fly sideways. However, we were amazed to see that this was still very stable without any spin stabilization. Look at the weird marks in there. See if we can yeah, get a little sun in there. There you go, that's better. Look at that. That thing is... It's buried in there. It looks like it hit straight. Some kind of a fiber. It's yeah, insulator or something. And the core is there. You still see the paint, yellow and blue paint on there. Wow, that's pretty cool. No exit. Any bulge in the back? No, that's a thick a plate there. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Yeah. At a can of peas at less than 10 yards. I'm ready. Oh yeah. I think I got peed on. When we filmed this, we had really no idea how the slugs were performing through the air. We usually find out all the details about that after we get home, upload the footage, and then review it. Wow! Wow! Everything looked quite normal for this shot, and it wasn't until we reviewed the high-speed footage that we saw that the steel shaft actually came apart from the rest of the commutator in this shot. The steel shaft became its own projectile and created a secondary impact. Pretty cool, actually. For me, it's always fascinating to find these little nuances and little quirks in the high-speed footage. Stuff that you just normally never even notice in real time. Okay, hey, well these make an anti, a good anti-gnome round. There's only one way to find out. Hit it! Oh man! There goes his head. <laughs> I think he's done. I don't know about you, but for me, garden gnomes rank up there with mimes, clowns, Impressive. and magicians. I hate them all. I just, there's something creepy about them. Okay, enough about my weird phobias. <laughs> Once again, without any spin stabilization and even shot through a full choke, the commutator slug proved to be very accurate and very stable in flight. In fact, these were more accurate than some of the factory loaded slugs we've tested in the past. Mm. Well, I guess you could say he's no more, no more. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Here, need a hand with that? <laughs> oh. Not much left of him this time. Yep. I just used uh, regular federal target loads for this. I used that Mountain Storm shell prepping tool to cut out the crimp and just stuff these into the shell. It was <laughs> about as simple as you could possibly get. And every single one worked. We showed you every shot that we took. Now some of you may have noticed that Danny was wearing the True Spec Cool Camp shirt. And I did notice some comments in our last video about some of the stuff that you guys have bought from True Spec. One guy in particular said he bought some pants there a couple years ago and they're still holding up very well and he expects to get several more years use out of them. The 24-7 Expedition pants feature all kinds of hidden compartments, little vents, zippered vents, Velcro flaps, little loops to hang your keys on, cell phone pockets. I mean, it's kind of like wearing a pair of uh, Swiss Army pants. I, I don't know how to better <laughs> explain it. They have reinforced knees, reinforced butt. They've They've got it all. They've got something called a French fly thingy for 
more security. I don't know what that is. You'll be able to save 20% from your order if you just use the code TAL20. So support the people that support us, and maybe we'll be around next year to make more videos. Thanks for watching.